In this video, I'm going to show you my process for making two-part silicone molds for pewter casting. I have to apologize to my viewers for my last silicone mold making video. I left a key sequence out in the mold making process, and I try to cover that in much greater detail in this video. Again, this is more about the silicone mold making process, and I will not spend much time talking about the pouring of pewter or the finishing of rough pewter castings. To make this part, I'm going to create the mold using MoldMax 60 silicone rubber compound. And uh, this is the so-called trial kit here, and I've bought several of these to make my molds out of. So this is the so-called part A, and this is the, uh, I guess you call it the accelerator or the fixer. This is the part B here. So I like to make my rubber molds in these little wooden boxes. There's nothing magic about that. I've, I've got a wood shop. I just go out and cut these out and I'll just glue them into place. So I, uh, I'm going to start off this uh, mold by making a uh, soft clay base in which to set the hand into. Uh, this non-hardening clay is very inexpensive. I got this at Michael's, a pound or so of it, uh, probably about five bucks. And I've used this stuff over and over. So it's kind of dirty, but that's okay. You work it and it's, it's not really critical anyway for this particular step that it'd be a real pure clay. It's just a utility material for this process. So I'm just going to roll it out and get it to the approximate size of the box. And then I'll cut the ends off here like this. Pick it up and just tick, stick it in the, the box and, and just kind of mush it down into the corners there. I use this paintbrush here. It's got a nice round end on it. It makes a real good stylus for mushing this clay around when it's in the mold. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to build up a little dam of uh, clay all around this and uh, I'll kind of determine where the parting line is. So I'm just taking little pieces of clay and I'll just work it all around the edges and down in between the fingers and I will do my best uh, to decide where the parting line is going to be and you really want to spend a little time here because this will determine uh, how nice a quality casting you're going to get if uh, you let if you have kind of a messy parting line you're going to spend a lot of time cleaning up your piece when it comes out of the mold so i'm just using this end of this brush here just to kind of work around the seam lines there but i'm just going around all the fingers and i want them to be about halfway uh, embedded into the clay so that that's one tool that i use and there's this other one here some kind of a sculpting tool i'm not sure what you call this thing like a little spoon of some sort just kind of go around it and seal everything in there as nice as you can. Again, it doesn't need to be perfect, but the best you can do at this stage, it'll really save you time after you're doing your casting. So the next thing I'm going to work on is my registration points here. Now, I made this mold probably a little smaller than I should have. I probably should have made it about a half inch bigger. And I don't really have room to put an acorn nut everywhere I normally would want to do it. So I will put one here and you'll see the purpose of that when I, I pour. This gives a place for the two halves of the mold to register. Now for this side here I didn't leave myself enough room for that so that's kind of a mistake on my part. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to take a piece of stiff wire here and I'm just going to kind of drill it into the clay and that way when I pour my silicone here, I'll end up with a piece sticking out of the silicone uh, that I'll pour the other side and it'll give me a place for the, to make sure that the two halves of the mold are very accurately uh, together. And so you don't have to have an acorn nut. That's what I, I use sometimes. Uh, on, this, uh, on this side here, I'll just push the brush in there and create a little dimple. That's probably adequate and I'll do another one on this side. So now I have four registration points around the hand and I really can't do anything here because this is where my sprue will end up being. I'm going to cut a nice big sprue right in there. So now uh, 
I'm going to uh, dress the inside of the mold with a little bit of Vaseline here and uh, I just put it on the inside of the, the wood. It's really not necessary to do this but it will make the uh, silicone pop out of here a little bit easier. So I'll just put a little bit of uh, a thin smear of uh, the Vaseline. You don't want it too thick and I don't want a whole bunch of it on the hand because the silicone will mold around it and it'll end up affecting the texture of the casting. Here I'm using a little piece of a paper towel just to dab the porcelain hand to remove excess Vaseline. I'm just using an old butter knife uh, to mix my uh, solution up here. This is the part A and uh, what I'll do is I'll mix that up just a little bit before I even pour it. And I've got a yogurt cup and uh, it's actually I think peach and banana. And I just know from experience that on a small mold like this, if I fill this up about halfway, that should be more than enough uh, to complete this part of the mold. So just I just eyeball this, okay? And so I'll mix this up a little bit before I put in my accelerant or my fixer. The instructions say, you know, to weigh this stuff out. And I suppose if you're looking for a real precise cure time, that's important. But... I've found it's not really necessary to do that so I just kind of eyeball it and uh, I'll mix this stuff up and it's interesting when you're mixing it it seems like it never will go into solution with the part A and then you're going to be mixing along and then all of a sudden boom it all it all fuses together it's kind of interesting so let's give this a good stir and uh, you got quite a bit of pot time but of course that's affected by how much of the uh, part B that you put in here. The more you put in here the quicker it cures. So regardless of the time to cure, um, I will leave this overnight. See look at that, all of a sudden it's all one color. Like the blue just kind of like absorbs in there. It's real interesting. Um, I just take it from on high here and just let it dribble on there real slowly. A lot of folks say don't pour it directly on the part you're casting. So I'm, I'm doing it towards the top where the sprue is going to be. And I'll just let the, the rubber flow over the top of the hand. Now, I leave it overnight, but I'll tell you what, if I come back in two or three hours, it'll probably be ready to demold. But it's late in the day, so I will uh, demold this tomorrow and do the second part of it. Good morning, everybody. It's Sunday morning, Mother's Day, and... Uh, I woke up anxious to come in here and demold this piece. And uh, in thinking about it, I realized I kind of made a mistake when I put this mold together. It's not exactly a rectangle here. So it's gonna give me a little bit of a fit when I try to flip it. But we'll work through that. I'll have to modify the box to get that to work. So uh, just take off my little hairband here and uh, pop the tailgate off of this. And uh, thanks to the Vaseline, it comes right off. And then I'm just gonna crack it loose here. I don't want to hurt my little hand that I've got so I'm just carefully pulling this up loose and it looks like the hand is going to stay with uh, the, the uh, clay in this case so that's okay. Pull this loose very carefully and I'm mindful of my little wire piece here and there it is. Okay so there's the bottom half of my piece and boy, it sure looks good, I have to say. So I'm going to take this loose from the clay here. I'll need it to pour the top. Now this little hand is made out of porcelain, so I'm gonna be very careful about getting this clay uh, off of it. I certainly don't wanna break it. And there it is, it looks good. So I'm gonna clean the clay off of this and I'll set it back down in here. And not to uh, overstress the point, but you really got to make sure that your original is nice and clean. So there's a little bit of clay stuck on this. You're going to want to get all of that off of there. Because if you don't, that'll end up being roughness on the cast piece. So I'm just using this acid brush here. You could use a toothbrush. And I'm getting all that clay away from the fingers and out of all the little crevices here. I've got my little porcelain hand cleaned up. And uh, I'll tell you, this, this bottom portion of the mold, almost no cleanup is needed here. And that's because 
I did a nice job on uh, sealing the clay all around. So there's very, very little cleanup that's needed. But if you do have a little bit of flash around the edge, you want to take care of that. There's just a little bit right here on the thumb. And uh, there's some flash here over this acorn nut. So I just kind of carved that away. Not a big deal. And I'll pull the acorn nut out. There we go. Okay, so my next step here is I'm going to make a box that'll work for this. <laughs> See, by not making this straight, it doesn't fit in this box anymore. So I'm going to have to take a minute and make another little box for this. Not a big deal. So there's my box. And I'll put my little tailgate on there and my hairband to hold it in place. Now you don't have to make your box out of wood like this. Not everybody's got a wood shop. I've seen this done with tape and cardboard and there's all kinds of ways to do this. So don't uh, think that this is the only way to do it. This is just how I do it. It works out pretty well. I've made a few of these little boxes and I've used them over and over. And so now I'm just going to take my Vaseline and coat the pattern a little bit, just a light coat. Now the silicone, again, I don't think will stick to it, but nonetheless, it doesn't hurt to put a little bit of the Vaseline on there. And, and I'm going to put it on the silicone especially because that's the only thing that the silicone will really stick to is itself. So I'm going to put that in there uh, pretty liberally. And I want to make sure I get it down in the registration hole. Sometimes that'll stick on me. And in between the fingers and up on the wood. It will stick to the wood a little bit if the wood is grainy, uh, but not too bad. It, it mainly will just stain the wood, but that is a little bit of the silicone being left behind. And so, whoops, popped out of there. Now some people mix mineral spirits. In with the Vaseline, I suppose that's okay. I, I did that, but it's just an extra thing you have to have on the side. I, I haven't found it to be necessary to do that. It does make for a thinner mixture. It runs around in there a little bit better, maybe. Uh, but uh, I just take the, the Vaseline right out of the jar, and it seems to work well for me. And again, just blotting the uh, pattern with the paper towel just to remove any excess Vaseline. That's ready to pour some more silicone. Here I'm pouring the top half of the mold and uh, the mixing and pouring is the exact same process I used for doing the bottom part of the mold. And there we go. We'll go do something else until this afternoon. About six hours have elapsed and uh, it's nice and firm. I know that from looking at my yogurt cup before I mess with this, so. Once again, the bands come off, and we'll see how the two-part mold came out. So I'm going to pop off my tailgate. This thing reminds me of a pickup truck when I do this. And uh, just kind of coax it apart here. I don't want to be overly heavy-handed. I don't want to injure the silicone. It's hard to injure it, but you can tear it. If you're a little, if you're a little heavy-handed, you can tear it. So I may give it a little assistance to get loose from the sides here. There we go. And let's see what we got. I take it real easy taking this apart. Don't forget I got the wire in there. I don't want that to tear the silicone. And it seems to be releasing pretty nicely. I think that's a very usable mold. So the next thing I'm going to do is cut my sprue and I'll draw a little picture here and show you what I'm going to do. Now I intentionally placed this hand towards the what will be the bottom of the mold here. And I did that so I could get the largest sprue possible. So I'm going to cut a conical uh, hole to let a liberal amount of metal uh, go into this. We want the weight of the metal to help all the fingers fill out. This is kind of a delicate little pour here. So I'm going to make a cone on both sides of the mold and make the biggest cone I can. Now, I will not put any vents in until I try this thing out. And if I need vents, what I'll probably do is, is put a couple of vents here across the wrist like that. But I won't do that unless it looks like I need to do that. 
you've seen my other videos and you've seen me do this part more than once, now the way I do it is I just use a single edge razor blade and just cut out a little V-groove in the piece like this. And then I'll open up and make a nice big funnel for the metal. And then to cut that diamond in like this and like this. Okay, I've cut my sprues in here and no vents at this point. So I'm just going to carefully put my little wire back in the hole and my registration points and I close it up and you can see I've made myself a little funnel. So I'll sandwich this between a couple pieces of wood and we'll go ahead and pour. See you at the melting table. So what I've got, uh, I've got this clamped in this box here and I'm tapping this with the spoon just to make sure the metal gets down into the fingers. Amazingly, the first three all came out pretty darn good. Uh, these have been polished up a little bit and uh, I left the sprue on these so that I would have a handle while I was polishing. I did a little light sanding with 180 and then some wool and then I just put it on the rag wheel with a little bit of polishing rouge and that's as far as I need to take it. So let's see how number four came out. Four is, is very good. No voids, the fingers look good. There's a little bit of flash between the fingers, but it's not much. And I found with the first three that it cleans up pretty easily. This is one of my most successful pewter casting projects so far. If you saw something in this video that you think I could have done better or have something to add, I sure hope you'll add a comment below. Thanks so much for watching.